Engineer 775. Man, I didn't even get my camera out. We've already got the ground mount built. We're on another job. And um, stop dropping stuff. There's Johnny up on the ladder. Abraham. The, old, the, the same crew. So we're building a 28 module, 410 watt panel, 72 cell ground mount about 400 feet away from where the inverter is going to sit. And it's going to be an EMP hardened Solar 12K. So uh, we're, of course, the MVP of the job is the Yanmar. And um, starting my trenching path about 400 feet to where I've got to go. Just got switched, took the Rambo driver off. We pounded these posts in, four posts. That one's seven foot deep at that end. And we're about five and a half feet deep on this end. So we're just putting on our purlins now on the Sinclair Skyrack, bolting on the pur uh, cantilevers, and we'll square it up. We just measure our diagonals and lock it down. Make sure it's nice and square. No parallelograms allowed. And, uh, and then we will uh, we'll panel this thing tomorrow. We're gonna build a pull box here. I might even put it on the back side there. And then I'll have a trench down to the down to the shop with the Solark 12K. Cantilevers on the west side, cantilevers on the south side, east side. Okay, so Johnny joined us for this job, about equidistant for both of us. And uh, we'll be doing one in his neck of the woods next week. And uh, where are we going? God's country, uh, Car, We're going to God's country. So anyway, didn't really show you the step-by-step -step on this one, but you might be tired of seeing ground mounts. I'm not sure. So tools and tricks of the trade. The Rambo did awesome. We're really learning how to unhook this thing and rehook it and attach it and uh, make sure that the um, pressure's relieved out of the released off of the excavator and off of the hoses. And uh, so we finally figured that out. But it's done really well. It's done really, really, really well. So we're just uh, wrapping up day one. We've got about four days here. We've got a lot of electrical to do. And uh, but, uh, this allows us to deploy and pound these posts and build without scheduling concrete. Woo, that's awesome. Okay, stay tuned for more exciting solar builds. Day two, we're getting ready to put up panels. This is 410 watt Axitex, 28 of them. That'll be four strings of seven for the Solark. And we've got everything squared up. So we're no longer a crazy parallelogram. And we're ready to install. And then we're poised and ready to take it to the barn, which is, we're gonna end up with a 600 foot trench overall to where the solar arc is going. We changed our trenching plan yesterday. And, uh, but that'll be, that'll be good. It's gonna be a good move. We're gonna stay out of the buildings as much as possible. We'll show you that later. And so we're getting ready, geared up here. It's a beautiful morning, got good weather, time to, get the outdoor stuff done in case it does rain. We got plenty of indoor work to do. Oh, Abraham's waiting on me. Some of our jobs, we need to have the meter removed. So we call the utility and they send out a meter tech to pull the meter for us. They send out the turkey slayer. Otherwise we get in serious trouble for breaking a seal and pulling a meter and doing what we're doing right now. What are we doing? We're putting in a double throw switch, double pull, double throw switch for our feed from the solar arc to the shop and so we're very thankful that the utility was able to come out here today and pull the meter meter is right here so once we get these landed in our transfer switch we can uh, have the utility put the meter back in and we'll be good to bring our our generator or our solar arc or whatever we're hooking to the other side in here okay but there's a time limit to how long the meter tech can stay here. No, he's, he's, this oh, there isn't a time limit? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Such a jerk. Day three, we're just wrapping up our uh, electrical build, getting the conduit. We're 600 feet and I'm just cleaning up. I gotta get way down 
there to the first pull box. And then we'll come back and button this up. But we're sitting at 307 volts on our strings. Just got to button this up. And we will be done with the ground mount. I just got to get boogieing. Get this trench backfilled, tamped in. I always keep my track in the trench. Keeps it tamped so when you come back next year or whenever, you don't find the trench. We put trenching tape in there above our conduit and so i've got to get going come on little yammer let's get this thing done okay end of day three we've got a transition here this uh the mc cable you see will go into that imo and then we're going to pull our number eight in there that is well it's 520 feet away and then we have some ser cable we're running this uh, transitioning to number six, which will go down in that inch and a half and feed a transfer switch on the other building. And, and then we have to, uh, we got an AC disconnect within line of sight of their meter and CT wire. This is a cat six wire we ran just so he could have an, a router. Uh, Yamar is really warm. She, no, she's good. Did a lot of work, 520 feet and covered up. So, pretty sandy here. But, yeah, so we ran a bunch of pipes. And we had ran this extra pipe for the homeowner who wants to possibly put a propane, do a little blacksmith shop off the edge of this his existing shop. So we came up here. This is where our solar is going to transition, our first transition. We'll uh, put some PDBs in there, power distribution blocks. And that SCR cable will transition to six, and we'll take six in into our transfer switch out here. It'll serve as an AC, serve as an AC disconnect, and we'll run the power, run the shop. And then, then we go up about from this point about 400 feet up to the solar. So I made them a little road through the woods to the solar. That's pretty much done. And then in here, just got, oh, lights are still on in here, might be in here. So we ran SER cable after we got the meter tech to come out and pull the meter for us. And then uh, landed that panel from the transfer switch. So be able to run, won't be able to run the whole shop, but should be able to run any individual load, table saws, planers, you name it. So. Originally, we were going to go here. We regrouped, changed our minds. We do that a lot. This is where our mech room's going to go. This is my first ARC battery. You're going to like these, these ARC batteries from Zana Energy. Our wiring trough is going to come here. And uh, so we're just going to button this up for this evening. And we'll be very busy in here tomorrow. It'll be our busy room. Get the fans going and get wiring. All right, and yeah, don't forget your deodorant. See you tomorrow. Ah, oh, day four, good morning. This is about to get real busy in here. We're gonna put a wiring trough, solar, GE transfer switch, arc batteries, pull the generator feed out of this panel, bring it over into our transfer switch, and then we're gonna power, we have a transfer switch, we can run this panel off of either their 22 kilowatt generator or grid or solar and we're going to put our cts in here and we're going to sell back with our bi-directional breaker here and so we've already run those conductors down into the crawl space and they are popped up right here so we've got number six running over there we've got this ser cable running um that's going to feed the shop and then we've got our two solar feeds from our transition box. I'll show you that. We have so much work to do today. I called for an inspection. Um, but we're, we're not going to be ready. But we're going to, hopefully, we'll be ready enough to pass <laughs> an inspection. The customer wants us to put a plug in for a Tesla. Tesla. <laughs> Woo! Plug for his uh, Tesla outlet for uh, his son's car. I'm going to do that for them today. We just pick that up, supply house.
But uh, time to get to work. Okay, this is our first install with the ARC battery, at least the first one for me. And uh, Abraham putting a base on the one over here, I'm going vertical with them. And as you can see, the terminals, you have uh, terminals on top, terminals on the bottom. We're not going to use the bottom terminals for paralleling here. Ooh. But there's options. You got lots of options. The only option they don't have is a wall mount bracket. But these are quite hefty at 150 pounds a piece. Might not want them on your wall. So, and there is this rack. We're not going to use it. We thought we might. This is a modular rack. You can go seven high. It's got casters on the bottom, but it's in a tight space. So we're not going to use it for this job. So we have regrouped with our soul with the arc battery. So this is a solar arc, arc combination, 12 K solar arc and 15 kilowatts of lithium storage. And this is going to be a time of use. So we are actually going to use these batteries every day for three hour intervals, depending on when the time of year it is. I'll go more into that later. Okay, I've hooked up the ARC battery and these nice flexible bus bars for the positive and negative. You see the batteries are on, just turned them on. They landed in the SolarC. And we're gonna fire this up shortly. We've just gotta land a few more wires and some grounds and we will be ready to fire it up. It's always exciting to fire up a lithium battery. Final day of testing and making sure everything is connected. I'm just going back and tightening up all the screws here in this power distribution block. This is where we transition from the service entrance cable um, that goes from the critical loads breaker on the inverter. And we transition to number six that we pulled over to his shop so he can run his shop off grid. And, um, and then we also brought our solar into a DC disconnect. We have three DC disconnects in the system. We're 600 feet away with the solar, so we just provided a disconnect here. It also allows us to transition from number 8 THHN over to this number 10 MC cable. And uh, we have that pulled into the wiring trough. This is pulled into the wiring trough. I'll show you that. So just wanted to show you what's going on in this pull box, transition box. And uh, just double checking terminals. We're wrapping up, testing, making sure things are tight and everything's looking good. Johnny Boy is putting in a little charging receptacle for a Tesla S that the customer's son, I think, has. And it's uh, 50 amp, but that's really gonna push, I think it's 33 amps that the car takes, the charger takes. So if they shut everything down but that, ch but that charger, they could charge the car on solar they'll have to manage that load though so but they want it in the critical loads panel and that's what we're doing for them so anyway that's one of the last little things we needed to add to the system and uh now it's time to test and label and go grid down final wrap up and testing morning of an 11 and a half kilowatt ground mount solar system that's six 100 feet from the inverter <laughs> and people ask how far away can you put your solar well as far away as you can afford the wire so um you can put it a long ways away and now i'm just going back to the house taking a shortcut through the little path and this is a time of use system they get charged a crazy amount of power i mean money for their um seasonal time of use uh, three hour blocks, $12 a kilowatt. Nobody believes me, but that's the way it is. So this, uh, system will completely offset that usage pretty close to it with the batteries and then, uh, charge it back up at five cents a kilowatt. So let's, uh, show you the rest of it. Okay. Here's our inside in the mech room, which is really the garage. First time using the arc batteries, putting a large resistant resistive load on it right now uh, oh it just dropped down because it was satisfied and uh, we're using the battery and the reason we're bringing the battery down is because we wanted to test the generator charge so we're using um, their generac generator we ended up splitting um, using the split bolts 
and connect it to this switch. So we're allowed, we, what we can do is we can either run the critical loads panel off of the generator and, or the grid is satisfying this when the generator transfer switch hasn't met. And then we can select the solar arc with this switch to run the critical loads panel. And we have another transfer switch on the other building. Anyway, I don't wanna complicate it too much. We have our um, CTs on here and that's measuring the current going to and from this house back to the utility. And uh, this is our grid. This is our feed bi-directional back fed breaker, 50 amps from the solar Tesla charger. But what we're doing right now is running the batteries down. So I can set a threshold in here so I can get the generator to show up and we'll be able to charge the batteries on generator. But the batteries are 100% full, so it wouldn't take any charge. So anyway, so we're working on that right now. We're gonna do a generator battery charging test here shortly. We've got solar turned off and we're just draining the battery about 10% so we can get it to work. So we used a combination of power distribution blocks and, power, and uh, Polaris lugs to uh, make our connections and splits. And we kind of labeled our things in here so we kind of know PV1, PV2, the sub panel, grid feed, a lot of SER cable. So that's it. So we're just about ready to fire up the generator again and charge some batteries. And we'll see if this icon will go from grid to a little portable generator and when it connects and we'll do that here as soon as we get this load, some of this battery discharged. So before we got here, the generator used to feed this panel, this critical loads panel. So we pulled the feeders out of this panel and we ran a loop down into the crawl space and then up into our gutter. And that hits, that hits um, the middle of this transfer switch. Okay, so we select between generator on the bottom and solar on the top. The output of this switch goes to that critical loads panel that I just showed you. Okay, the power out from the solar goes to this power distribution block. Okay, it actually splits so the power, it hits the power distribution block and then splits. It goes out to the, the shop. And then it also goes to the top side of this transfer switch. Uh-oh. And that's what these things do.